Hello everyone, welcome back to the Force Galaxy. Hope you all are doing good. So today we will going to discuss some interview questions which are usually asked on the asynchronous epics. So now the very first question is what is asynchronous epics? So in this we will answer what is asynchronous process or epics and how many types of asynchronous epics we are having as Salesforce. An asynchronous process is a process or function that execute a task in the background without the user having to wait for the task to finish. Or in simple words, we can say an asynchronous epic is used to run a process in a separate thread. So simultaneously, we can run more than one process at a time. So the different ways to implement the asynchronous epic is feature method, batch epic, queuable epic, and the schedule epic. So now the next question is what is mixed DML exception? So this is very common question and frequently asked. So now let's discuss what is mixed DML exception. So this error means that the two object setup and the known setup that we are using in our code cannot be mixed during the same transaction. Example, I am having one trigger and in this trigger um, performing DML on both the object that is one setup that is user and another known setup that is account contact or any custom object. So in a single transaction, it is not allowed or it will not going to allow me to perform DML on both the object of different categories that is setup and non setup so to avoid this tml what we have to do we have to transfer one of the object into this another or different transaction to learn more about in detail about the mixed tml exception and how i have avoided this uh, you can visit my future method video in which i have uh, explained with the example about the mixed tml so now the very next question comes with this is what are the solution or how we can avoid the mixed DML exception. Now let's discuss the solution how we can avoid this. So the solution is to separate the DML operation on both the object that is separating the setup and the non setup object and making them to execute in their different transactions. So we can use this using the future method. What we can do from a method simple method we call our future method in which we are performing DML either on the setup or the non setup object. Now the next question is what are the points or what are the considerations which we should keep in mind while working with the future methods. So following are the points which we should keep in mind while working with future method. First and second points are fixed we cannot change them that is they, they must be static and their return type is void. Now the next is the specified parameter must be primitive data type arrays of primitive or collection of primitive data type. We cannot pass standard or custom object as an argument. We can pass list of IDs that you want to process asynchronously. Again from the fourth point, third and fourth point, yes, there is there a way to pass the standard or the custom objects? Yes, there is a workaround. Let's discuss this in the next question. So now the next question is why we do not pass as object in the future method or is there a way to pass the as object in the future methods? So objects can't be passed as an argument to the future method is because the object can change between the time we call the method and at the time it actually executes. So as the future methods are executed when the system resources become available or in this case the future method may have an old object value when it actually execute which can cause all sorts of bad things to happen. So now we also have a way to pass the s object through the parameter in the s uh, future method now uh, as you can see i have one trigger so in the trigger i have passed the value of trigger dot new by making it or converting it into the string that is i have used the json dot serialize due to which my all the values are converted to the string and now this string will be passed as a future method parameter so my condition to pass the parameter to future method is also satisfied because now I am passing the primitive data type that is a string. So now once I pass the value now in the future method what I will do I will deserialize this string and what we will get we will get the list of accounts. So this is the one workaround or a way to pass the s objects values by converting them into the string. So now the next question is can we use the future method in the visual force controllers or in the constructor so the answer is no we cannot use future method in the getter setter methods or in the 
कंस्ट्रक्ट सो द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज कैन वी कॉल अ फ्यूचर मैथड फ्रॉम अनदर फ्यूचर मैथड सो द आंसर इज नो चेनिंग ऑफ जॉब इज नॉट अलाउड इन द फ्यूचर मैथड बट येस इन द क्यूबल एपिक्स वी कैन डू सो सो इन द क्यूबल एपिक्स वी कैन कॉल वन क्यूबल मैथड फ्रॉम द अनदर और अ चेनिंग ऑफ जॉब इज अवेलेबल सो नाउ द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज एज वी ऑल नो दट द फ्यूचर मैथड आर स्टैटिक एंड दे हैव द रिटर्न टाइप वाइट बट वाई सो वाई द फ्यूचर मैथड्स आर ऑलवेज स्टैटिक एंड दे ऑलवेज हैव अ रिटर्न टाइप ऑफ वाइट सो नाउ लेट्स एक्सप्लेन दिस now making my future method as a static means that it is now associated with the class and not to the instance and now we can access them without instantiating the class and the static keyword make it as a utility method rather than the normal class method and for the return type void as the future method runs when the system resources become available and it runs on its own thread so it is not possible or it cannot return any value to the previous instance so the return type is always void so now the next question is which i also take a minute to think that is from where or what are the places from where we can call our future method or a batch apex so now let me tell for the future method so for for the future method they so they can be called from a trigger from a apex class and from a scheduler class also now let me know in the comment section that what are the places from where we can call our batch apex class so now the next is how we can invoke or run our batch class so now let's see so to invoke a batch class we call the database dot execute batch method and in this method we pass the parameter the one parameter is the instance of our batch class and the second parameter is optional which is to define the size of our batch so now the next question is can we call a batch apex from the another batch apex class so the answer is yes we can but we can only call it from the finish method and if we try to call another batch apex from the start or execute method it will going to throw us an exception that is the system dot async exception so only only in the finish method we can call another batch apex as above we have discussed that the another batch class can be called from the finish method so why we cannot call it from the execute method is there any specific reason so now let's discuss yes there is a reason uh, as we all know that the our execute method runs multiple times so if in if it depends upon the number of batches and it will execute in multiple time and it will going to call our another class multiple time which will going to give us an exception that is system dot async exception so this is my batch class and let's suppose i have 250 number of records so in this case two batches will be create if i consider a batch size 200 default batch size so in this case one batch will be create with 200 number of records and the next with 50 records so to execute both the batches my execute method will run twice and if i chain my job or next batch in this execute method it will going to call my next batch twice and also give me an exception of async exception so to avoid this we will what we will do we will call our method or sorry next batch in the finish method that is once all the batches are executed after this the finish method will be called once and in this chaining of next job or next batch will be done and call our next batch one only one time so now the next is can we call a web service call out from the batch apex yes we can make a call out from the batch apex i mean in this case we need to implement one extra interface that is database dot allow call outs so now the next question is what are the different status we have in our apex flex queue so now let's discuss or oh, let's see how many status we have when we submit a job so these are the different status so holding queue preparing processing aborted completed and failed so here aborted is when we cancelled our submitted job so we get to see the status as aborted now in the failed is when any exception occur and the status will be marked as failed completed when all the process is completed successfully so now the next question is what is the difference between database dot batchable and database dot batchable context so this is my batch class and here as you can see the interface is implemented database dot batchable and in the method parameter is passed database dot batchable context 
So database stored batchable is an interface and database stored batchable context is a context variable which store the runtime information example job id. So using this variable we can access the job id of our job. So now the next question is what is database dot stateful or where we use this data dot stateful or what are its uses now let's discuss this this point i also missed from my batch apex class video so we will discuss this in this video what is database dot stateful so if we specify database dot stateful in the class definition we can maintain state across all the transactions when using database dot stateful only instance member variable retain their values between all the transactions and maintaining this value that is the state value is useful for counting or summarizing records as they are processed. So this is my batch class and at the top as you can see one more interface is added database dot stateful and one variable is declared this is of integer type initialize as zero so this interface will going to retain the value of this variable in all the transactions suppose two batches are there which are going to execute so in both the batches the value of this variable will be going to retain it will not initialize with zero as soon as the next batch will execute so it will going to give me total count of the records number of records are processed and now this count we can use to send an email or to get to know how many records are processed similarly if we want to summarize the detail of records we can use this database sort of stateful goodbye so these are the few questions which are common with the asynchronous epics so we will meet you soon in the next video till then take care goodbye